Termite mounds are extraordinary things. They look so alien in the landscape, like small volcanoes with additional side chimneys and funnels. The termites live in a nest at the base of the mound, which they build out of the surrounding clay or mud. One of my first encounters with termites was in Namibia, where they're sought out by bat-eared foxes. The bat-eared fox is a small mammal, most active at dawn and dusk, that resembles, well, a fox with bat-like ears. It uses its hugely disproportionate ears, a bit like satellite dishes, to pick out the sounds of its dinner, insects. And one of its favorite meals, termites. Now, we don't often think of insects as being noisy creatures, especially those living underground. So to find out how the bat-eared fox finds its grain-sized prey, I lowered a tiny microphone down one of the holes of a termite mound. I placed the headphones over my ears, and what I heard next was so bizarre. It sounded like popping candy or a bowl of crisped rice cereal after it's had milk poured over it. It made me realize that whilst everything seemed calm and sedentary on the outside, inside the mound, the termites were really busy. My presence didn't go unnoticed either, and eventually a few termites came out to explore and started blocking up the hole I was using with fresh, muddy saliva. How rude. Back in England, I was reminded of those termites when I was in the local shopping center. It was a hot summer's day and the temperature started to rise. Surrounded by crowds of people, I began to feel trapped. Even talking about it now actually makes me feel quite anxious. Ugh. You know how it is. You slowly feel yourself getting hotter and hotter and hotter. There seems to be no escape. I swear they do it on purpose. You can't open any windows. There's no air conditioning. Beads of sweat start forming on the brow of your forehead. You can't wait to get out, get home, and into the shower. It's often the case in office blocks too. Lots of people, all packed into a small space, poor ventilation, and rising temperatures. Get me out of here! So how do you keep a shopping center well ventilated and the customers nice and cool? Well, it appears that termites have the answer. Hello and welcome to 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter from the BBC World Service. The podcast that investigates the amazing things that animals have taught us. I'm Patrick I, and thank you so much for all your comments about the series so far. It's been great to hear what you think. So keep sending those comments and do let your friends know about the podcast and spread the word. Our website is bbcworldservice.com slash 30 animals. And the hashtag is ding ding 30 animals. In this episode number nine, termites and ventilation systems, we'll discover how an architect with a ventilation problem found inspiration on the plains of Africa. The science of heating and ventilating buildings is a challenge that architects and designers regularly face. Architects like Mick Pierce, who was hired in 1991 to design the Eastgate Centre, the largest office and retail building in the Zimbabwe capital of Harare. But he had a problem, a financial problem. He had to come up with an efficient ventilation system for the building that was cheap and I mean really cheap. Could it be possible to design a building that regulates its heating and cooling all by itself? Then one day, the solution came to him as he sat watching a BBC natural history television program about termites. Termites live in very hot climates. In an effort to stay cool, they live in nests below the ground, at the foot of huge mounds made of sand, clay, mud and saliva that can tower over nine meters high. That's more than four times the height of a human being. 
Despite the height, with several million insects living together, the air inside a mound could get very stale. But the termites have solved that problem too. And it was then that Mick realized that the solution to his problem was staring him right in the face. Scattered across the forests and grasslands of Africa, Asia and South America are societies of expert builders. They've been described as looking like little grains of rice with big heads and hedge trimmers for mouthparts, which doesn't necessarily inspire confidence when it comes to urban planning. But these tower-building species of termites know exactly what they're doing when it comes to engineering their homes. And they need to because they can only survive if their environment stays within one degree of 31 degrees Celsius. But the temperature in places like Zimbabwe, for example, can fluctuate as much as 20 degrees between day and night. So, how do the termites manage to regulate the temperature inside their mounds? What's their secret? Well, it turns out the large mound that each colony constructs above the nest acts as a natural air conditioning system. For decades, scientists have marveled at these towering mounds and how they work. Although it was widely believed that these insect superstructures helped with ventilation in the nest, exchanging stale air for fresh air, how this was achieved remained a mystery. It was only after installing tiny airflow sensors in about two dozen termite mounds belonging to a species called Odontotermes obesus and with the help of thermal imaging that scientists like Hunter King and his colleagues at Harvard University were able to put forward a solution to this mystery. Their studies revealed that each mound acts like an external lung and uses the change in temperature as day becomes night to drive ventilation. It's all based on the principle that hot air rises and cold air falls. Another way of thinking about this is that termites build towers which optimize the mixing and exchanging of oxygen and carbon dioxide, much like our lungs. The mounds are, in some ways, an extension of their metabolism, a living system. Let me show you how it works. First, we've got to shrink down in size a bit. About the size of a fingernail should do it. Right, now we can have a little stroll inside. Just watch out for the termites. Whoa, it's a bit dark in here. Take care where you're walking. Oh, and don't touch anything. As you can see, far from being a solid structure, termite mounds are covered in really tiny pores invisible to the human eye, which allow air to pass through them. You can think of the mound as being like a brittle sponge. Look over there, there's a large central chimney connected to a system of pipes located in the mound's thin, flute-like side mounds called buttresses. During the day, the air in the thin buttresses warms more quickly than the air in the insulated central chimney. As a result, Hot air rises up through the outer chimneys and cool air in the central chimney sinks so the air circulates, continuously bringing in oxygen and flushing out carbon dioxide. At night, the ventilation system reverses as the air in the outer mounds or buttresses cools quickly, falling to a temperature below that of the central chimney. This reversal in airflow in turn expels the carbon dioxide rich air that builds up in the subterranean nest over the course of the day as a result of the termite's metabolism. And as an extra touch, some species of termite constantly adjust the mound, alternatively opening up new tunnels and blocking others to more actively regulate the heat and humidity inside, or to stop any annoying presenters from shoving mics down the tunnels. Clever, eh? Right, time to get out of here. Back in front of his television, Mick Pierce realized he could use what he was seeing in the termite mound to ventilate the combined shopping center and office blocks he was designing in Harare. The site is made up of two buildings, linked together by a glass roof. A network of walkways and steel bridges spans the atrium below, 
with lifts and escalators between the various levels and the sky walkways. The building is made from concrete slabs and bricks. And just like the soil inside our termite mound, these materials have a high thermal mass, which means they can absorb a lot of heat energy without really changing in temperature. The exterior of the building is prickly like a cactus, which increases the surface area of the building. This has the effect of increasing heat loss at night, whilst heat gain is reduced during the day. Inside the building, electric fans suck up cool night air from outside and blow it upstairs through hollow spaces under the floors, and from there into each office through vents. As it rises and warms, the air is drawn out through 48 round brick funnels. During cool summer nights, fans are used to circulate air through the building seven times an hour to chill the hollow floors. During the day, fans circulate two changes of air an hour through the building. In this way, the air is kept fresh. At night, when the temperature drops, the concrete blocks are cooled and this chills the circulating air. When morning comes and the temperature rises, warm air is vented up through the ceiling and released by the chimneys. Thanks to this design, the temperature is maintained at comfortable levels. And whilst there's still room for improvement in this award-winning design, it uses 50% less energy than buildings that are cooled with conventional air conditioners. But like the termites and their finishing touches, Mick didn't stop there. He worked with a team in Australia to design and construct the Melbourne City Council House 2 building. Also known as CH2, the face of the building is made up entirely of vertical timber slats, which cover a fully glazed wall. These slats pivot vertically, opening and closing in response to the time of day and the angle of the sun. It's almost as if the building comes to life as it moves in response to the conditions around it. By doing this, the structure maintains an internal temperature of between 21 and 23 degrees Celsius, and at the same time, uses 80% less energy than buildings of the same size. Someone else who's long been fascinated by termite mounds and their ventilation systems is Rupert Saw an engineer at Nottingham Trent University in England. Taking lessons from the termite mound, Saul believes that we should try and create buildings that are permeable and allow for better airflow. He argues that buildings are generally designed as hermetic boxes, as in they're virtually airtight, and this, he believes, needs to change. Walls, he says, should be more like membranes, as well as saving energy by creating a more natural airflow instead of one powered by electricity, this would eliminate problems such as dampness that result when buildings are almost airtight. Of course, this would require a fundamental shift in the way buildings are conceived and produced, and potentially the end of traditional bricks and mortar, and the introduction of more breathable structures. Isn't it amazing to think what several million termites inside a mound in the desert can teach us about living in our cities. For a list of sources of information for this episode, head on over to our website, bbcworldservice.com slash 30animals. We'll be leaving the heat of Harare and heading for the polar regions in number 10 of 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, an original podcast from the BBC World Service where we'll discover how snow fleas and polar fish are inspiring new ideas to help store ice cream and improve organ transport. It's going to be our coolest podcast yet. Thanks for listening. <laughs>